Hello and welcome to Homemaking with Joy. My name is Rachel and today we are going to be making some Instant Pot Yogurt. It's a pretty straightforward recipe. It seems intimidating to a lot of people, but the Instant Pot does most of the work and the outcome is awesome. So I hope you'll join me today to learn how to make some Instant Pot Yogurt to feed your family well, especially those kids. They really like it. So without further ado, let's get started. Step number one, sterilize your Instant Pot. You don't have to do this, but I often choose to do this. Um, depending on what you've cooked in your Instant Pot recently, there could still be some lingering in there and you don't wanna accidentally incubate and grow something that will make your yogurt not good. Like if you cook chicken in here and there's any chicken left over, you're going to have chicken yogurt, which is gross. The other thing about sanitizing it is it will help um, clean and remove smells from your lid. So your ceiling ring is notorious for holding on to smells and stuff. So um, sanitizing it will help with that too. To sanitize your Instant Pot, you'll put in three cups of cold water and then cook it at high pressure for 15 minutes. When that is done, you take the lid off, you quick release, take the lid off, dump the water out and then sit this somewhere else to cool because if you put your cold milk in here to make yogurt when it's still warm, it will scald on the bottom and that's not good either. Ask me how I know. So once your Instant Pot is clean, then we can move on to the next step. Before I get any further, I want to give credit where it's due. I learned a lot about Instant Pot yogurt from Kristen at A Mindful Mom. I will link her blog post below where she answers so many questions about making Instant Pot yogurt. This is what I've gleaned from her recipe and tutorials and how I make it now. But thanks so much, Kristen. To get started with your yogurt, you're going to need some milk. I have half a gallon of milk here. The recipe calls for half a gallon. I think you can also do a gallon, but I haven't tried that yet. My boys don't eat uh, that much yet. But this is just regular store-bought whole milk that I will be using today. So pour this into the pot, then we will get it heated up. My milk is in my Instant Pot and now I need a lid. Today I'm going to use a glass lid. I got this to go with the Instant Pot for the slow cooker setting, but it works for this too. You can use your regular lid. Um, if it's smelly, you can take out the ceiling ring because we will not be coming to pressure, or you could just sit a plate on top. But this is the route I like to take. Next, we need to heat the milk. So come down here to yogurt to boil. This is going to heat our yogurt to ideally 180 degrees. Is it gonna make some noise? There we go. It is now heating up. Like I said, we want it to hit 180 degrees to kill any possible bad bacteria that could be in our milk that we do not want to incubate into our yogurt. My Instant Pot just beeped at me and switched from boil to yogurt, which tells me that the heating process is complete. I'm going to grab my digital thermometer and make sure that my milk is actually 180 degrees. If it's not, I will turn on the saute setting and whisk it until it reaches 180 degrees. not quite 180. So I will take this out and cancel the yogurt setting, turn on the saute setting, which will heat the bottom of my Instant Pot. I will grab a whisk and whisk it for the next couple of minutes until my thermometer reads 180 degrees. Let's check again. We did it. 180. Now I will turn it off. I'll probably still whisk it a couple of times just to make sure the bottom doesn't get too hot. But now is a tip that I learned from Kristen. Kristen from A Mindful Mom recommends turning your Instant Pot off and letting your yogurt sit for five minutes before continuing to the next step. She finds that letting it sit just these couple minutes at 180 degrees really help the yogurt set up later. So I've never done it any other way because I trust Kristen's judgment and her testing with these recipes. So that is what I'm going to do. Whisk it just a couple more times to make sure the bottom is not too hot. Let it sit for five minutes and then I will get my ice bath ready. 
After your yogurt has been sitting for five minutes, you'll want to cool it down to about 110 degrees, anywhere between 105 and 115. So you can do this two ways. You can sit it on the countertop, which takes about an hour, or get an ice bath, which is what I usually do. So my sink is right down here. I've put some cold water in there with some ice. I'm going to grab my Instant Pot and put it in here. If you do it this way, it takes like 10 minutes, which is much better for me. My kids both woke up at the same time and needed me, so it's been longer than 10 minutes. Let's see what the temperature is. Yep, not ideal, but better than too hot, I guess. That's not too bad. Okay, there's my temperature. While it's been sitting, there's a little bit of a skin on the top, so I'm going to take a little mesh strainer here and just grab any solids that may be floating on the top, and that'll help make for a creamier yogurt. That's foam and skin. Now that my milk has been heated and cooled, I'm gonna take it out of my ice bath, dry off the outside before it goes into the Instant Pot, and then I will add my starter culture. The last step before incubating your yogurt is adding the live cultures. These are the good bacteria that you want to put in your yogurt and that's what makes it tangy and probiotic. So you can buy actual yogurt starter packs um, from Cultures for Health, things like that, or you can just buy some pre-made yogurt from the store. So I just buy a little cup, it has to be plain. It doesn't matter if it's Greek or what's the other, plain, um, but not flavored yogurt. This has live cultures in it, so I will just scoop some of this into my cooled milk. The recipe calls for two tablespoons of starter to every half gallon of milk, but I don't need like three quarters of a container of yogurt in my fridge, so I just dump the whole thing in because it can't hurt. So let's do that. Some whey came off the top. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Not bad. Good enough for now and then we just whisk that in until it is all smooth my starter culture is fully whisked into my milk here and now we get to the set it and forget it part we'll pop the lid on and i'll show you what buttons to push to make some yogurt grab whatever lid you're going to use and we need the yogurt button until it says normal i'm going to go through the settings again so you see what they look like so boil that's what we did earlier this says less, we do not want that, we want normal. I like to do mine for nine hours. Most people do anywhere between eight and 10 hours. The longer it goes, the tangier it will taste. You'll notice the timer counts up, so it will count up to nine hours, and that's when I will see you next. So it is past my bedtime. It's very late at night. Please excuse the dishwasher running in the background. This has been incubating for eight hours and I'm just gonna turn it off. Ideally I do nine, but anywhere between eight and 10 is totally fine. Sometimes I do this where I make the yogurt in the evening or I make this part in the evening, let it incubate overnight and then stick it in the fridge in the morning. But today I decided to do it differently. So here we are late at nighttime with this uh, yogurt. This part's super easy though. I'm gonna pull out the liner, leave the lid on and stick it in the fridge. That's it. <laughs> It'll set up more overnight. Don't stir it, don't touch it, don't do anything. If you have your regular Instant Pot lid on, you can just take that off and again, like put plastic wrap or beeswax wrap or a plate or silicone lid or one of these lids on top of it just to keep it fresh in the fridge. That's it. So from here, this goes in the fridge and then I'm going to bed. See you in the morning. Hello, I told you I would see you in the morning and that turns out to not be true. It is currently nap time. We, we've had a busy day. Um, things got away from me and so now I'm going to address my yogurt. You may hear I have my pressure canner going in the background doing some kidney beans. Um, this is dinner thawing and this is bread that I put together this morning. Um, I have a big bucket here that I got to wash because I need to refill some of my bulk goods. Excuse the camera. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I've been up to. Also, being a mom all morning. So, let's get to the yogurt. Some people use it just like this, and you are more than welcome to do that, but I'm gonna show you how I like to process the yogurt from here. So, take the lid off, 
this is what it looks like on the inside. So it's really creamy if you just scoop it like that. It's, yeah, and it smells like yogurt, it smells really good. But you'll see, can you see at the bottom? No, you can't. As I start mixing it, it starts to get thinner and thinner. So if I stir it a bit, it's not as thick as it looks. Many people would be very happy with that yogurt, and that is totally fine. I, however, like to put it through a strainer to make it more like a thick, creamy Greek yogurt. So I'm going to, actually first, I'm gonna take a couple teaspoons of, no, two tablespoons. I think it's two tablespoons of starter out of this yogurt batch so I can keep it and then use it as my starter for my next batch of yogurt because you want it to be plain just the straight up yogurt I'll grab some of that then I will put it in my strainer I'll strain it for a couple of hours like three hours ish or whenever I remember it in the fridge and then pull it back out I'll add some sweetener and then put it into jars for my family so if you've never seen one of these this is a really, really, really fine mesh strainer. Some people use coffee filters or cheesecloth, things like that. I knew I'd be making a lot of yogurt, so I got one of these. Um, it fits a half gallon of yogurt, which is perfect. So I'm going to dump it all in here and then show you how it works. Let me lower you a little bit. There you go. really nice yogurt like I said if you wanted to eat it like this by all means you could but I generally like it to be thicker and getting the last bit in is a little bit tricky I don't know if anyone on YouTube has ever told you this too. Doing things on camera, like I, I do this literally all the time, but knowing there's a camera watching me makes everything 10 times more difficult. So for the people who make YouTube look really smooth, they're professionals. Okay, it's already dripping. Can you see that? That is the whey. So the thicker part of the yogurt will stay in the top and then the whey, the liquid will drop to the bottom. So by the time I pull this out of the fridge in a couple of hours, we'll have like this much whey in the bottom and a super, super thick yogurt on top. So that's it folks, lid goes on, goes back in the fridge. Again, if you didn't wanna do this step, your yogurt would be done more quickly. I don't mind keeping it in the fridge a little bit longer because no one's starving. No one knows there's yogurt in the fridge. If my kids knew it was in there, they might be a little less patient, but they don't. So into the fridge it goes. I'll come back in a little bit and then maybe they'll have some with their dinner. My yogurt has now been straining for a couple of hours. This is what it looks like. I'll take the lid off and show you what the inside looks like soon, but I'm ready for the next part, which is to take the yogurt out and put it into some jars. My family prefers if I package it or put it into individual portions instead of just putting all of this in one big container. Especially with kids, they can hold these jars and then um, feed themselves, which is ideal. So I have mason jars. They're both pint jars, which means they're one cup. This is a regular mouth pint and this is a wide mouth pint. This one definitely mimics um, like a yogurt cup you'd buy from the store, which makes it really nice. This one's a little smaller at the top, but they both do the trick. So, let me lower the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. Here is my lovely thick yogurt. That is thick. I'd taste it, but I don't like it plain. <laughs> so I like to put it in my jars from here. And then I will add a sweetener. So from this point you can do maple syrup, honey. I have honey right here. So I add some honey. Like mm, that much. Your, it's based on your family's preference. And like my kids can handle it a little less sweet. My husband likes it sweeter. Just mix it in and add a lid. 
So I have these reusable mason jar lids. Pop it on, stick it in the fridge. Super easy for on the go or lunches or whatever you wanna do. Here is the wide mouth version. If for some reason you let it sit too long and it's too thick or there's too much whey at the bottom, you can absolutely just dump some whey into here um, and it will thin it out a little bit. Also, don't throw away the whey. You can use it for lots of other things. I know there's a whey pie in Jill Winger's Prairie Homestead cookbook. Um, we like to just toss it in as the liquid for smoothies because it has great probiotic benefits, stuff like that. Another one done, another lid. And I will just keep doing that until our, all of my jars are filled. And that's how I make yogurt. You can also add fruit on top or mix fruit in. I know some people will do um, just plain yogurt in the jar and then add like a strawberry jam or preserves. Um, and that's how they sweeten it and add flavor, similar to yogurt cups you could find at the store. But the possibilities are endless and it gives you the freedom to know exactly what's in your food when you make it and you have it in your fridge to feed your family. I hope this was helpful. Leave me any comments and subscribe for more information like this. Thank you. It is the morning after I made the yogurt and this is what my kids ate for breakfast. I had one of these jars and they ate the rest. They ate these three, half of these. I have two toddlers.